Hello guys, I'm Peter from Builder Boeing. After many months of prototyping, I finally finished the selector for the auto brake today on our management panel. Now, the special thing about this uh, selector is that from the three position to the maximum position, you need to pull out in order to turn. It's a safety feature, so you don't select maximum by accident. But designing that has taken me months. But today, finally, I finished my 3D print and here it is. This is what it looks like. The files are available from my website for free, so you can download this and print it yourself. And uh, let me just show you how it works. The design is actually quite simple. You see that white lever right there that turns when I turn? And over here, you might be able to see that there is like a black box. And when you turn, the lever goes onto the box and you're not able to go any further. So you need to pull up and then you can turn it onto and it lays on top of the box. And once you return, it drops down to a normal position like this. It's actually that simple, but it took, I don't know how many prints, let's say like 50 or 80 prints and prototypes to get it right. But here we are. Okay, so let me just run through what you need. First of all, you need a rotary switch and you need a rotary switch that's 45 degrees with a D-shaped shaft. That's very important because this flat part here does all the magic. When you print this part, it's D-shaped as well. And it's the flat part here that transfer the torque from when you turn to the switch. So if you have a round rotary switch, this would just spin around because you're not able to fasten it in any way because it needs to be able to move up and down freely. And that's why you can't glue it in place. And you need that D-shaped shaft. So you need that. Then you need a spring. And this spring is standard spring. I found in a spring assortment box uh, like this. And I'm sure you're able to find something similar on, uh, on eBay. And this spring is around 35 millimeters. And the inner diameter is seven and a half millimeters. So it's a standard spring. And then you need some spacers. And I have a 20 millimeter and I needed a bit extra. So that's a fiber and then 30 millimeters for the pan up here. So this is around 30, 28 millimeters. And this is 30. You could do with just 30 and 30, I reckon. But I just had this laying around. And that's, and then of course, uh, some nuts, some washers, some screws, standard equipment, but that's what you need. Then you need to print different parts. And the first thing is the box here. And the box here is turned the opposite way around. So actually it should go on like this. And on the back you have a hole for the four spacers and a hole for the rotary switch to hold that in place. And then you have this layer, which has the the box here that stops the lever. And then you have the top layer here that has like a color, like the color on, on, on your shirt and, and the neck, not the different colors like blue or green, but the one at your neck. And that holds the spring in place. If we didn't have this, the spring would just move it, find its way through the hole and start moving up. So this holds the spring in place. So that's very important. And that color is located right there. And then the last thing is the shaft. This is six millimeters. And I tried to make this transparent because I want to install a, a LED strip in here and see if the light can shine through and perhaps light up the knob. But I am not sure if that, if I'm gonna be successful with that, but that's why it's transparent. And I would recommend that you print it like this. Normally you would Print it like this, I reckon, to avoid uh, too much uh, support filament. But do it like this, and you will have a print that looks like this when you do it, with a lot of support filament down here, but no filament, support filament up here. And that's why you want to print it upside down. Because this, afterwards, you need to clean this and make sure that you have enough play so that the shaft can move freely up and down, but not to the sides. So you need to clean it a bit, use perhaps a file, a nail file, something like that, or a screwdriver, and just clean it 
and make sure that it moves freely up and down. See, I'm not quite done with this. This doesn't move freely, but it should move freely up and down, but not freely from side to side. If you're having problems with the dimensions here, the Fusion file is available for download and you can edit it yourself to get the precise diameter that you want. But this is actually all that you need to make this work. As I mentioned, head over to boulderboeing.com to download the files. There's also a Fusion 360 file that you can uh, alter the different dimensions. I've included a link to video below that explains what to do in Fusion 360 and what to alter. So I hope that will help you. I am unfortunately not able to help you edit the files to uh, suit you built. You need to do that yourself. I hope that's okay. I wish you happy printing. Go download, go print. I'm Peter from Builderboeing. You guys take care. Bye-bye.